Hello, my name is Victor Lopez and this is Direct Democrats. I also have a blog, directdemocrats.com, and a video channel, which is Victor Lopez, Direct Democrats. At the end of the video, you will find information to contact me, because I'm quite happy to speak about direct democracy anywhere in the world. I think people do not know about direct democracy, and what little they know often is wrong, because it has been distorted by the sources, which in many cases are not fond of direct democracy. When I refer to direct democracy, I mean basically that the people have the last word on any law, any policy, any treaty, or the contents of the Constitution. That the people are the final authority. Direct democracy does not necessarily mean that the people decide everything, but that the people have the power to decide anything they want to decide, and that not even the Supreme Court of the country could overturn let alone the legislature or the executive. Now, the model I use for direct democracy is Switzerland. Switzerland is not a perfect direct democracy because it still has important elements of representative democracy, but I like to refer to Switzerland because it's basically the only country with a long track record of direct democracy at all levels at the local level, at the canton, which is equivalent to a state, province, or region, and the national level. The only other country that is approaching Switzerland and that has been inspired by Switzerland is Taiwan. Yes, surprisingly, Taiwan. Taiwan did something amazing. In a few decades, it evolved from a right-wing dictatorship to a representative democracy, and now has many very interesting elements of Swiss direct democracy. Uruguay, a small country in South America, also has important elements of direct democracy. But I like to refer to Switzerland because Switzerland has credibility. We all know that Switzerland is probably the most stable country in the world, economically, socially, in almost any respect, and ranks number one in many indicators. And of course, it's the most developed democracy in the world because it has direct democracy. Representative democracy is a huge advance over the dictatorships, over totalitarian regimes of one party, one person, one religion, but is not real democracy because in a representative democracy, the people decide only one essential thing, which is who will govern. Once the person who governs is in power, the person or the party, those people can basically do anything in between elections, unless they have a minority government, in which case they have to rely on some other supporters. But if they have a majority, what you have in representative democracies in the United States, in Canada, in France, in the UK, in Germany, with minor differences, is almost absolute power. If, for example, in the United States, which many people refer to as an example of division of power, in the United States, if the president and the Congress are on the same side, that means controlled by one party, is just like any other country. Why do I refer to Swiss direct democracy? Because I believe that Swiss-style direct democracy makes better decisions than representative democracy. And I'm going to refer also to why that happens. I'm going to try to explain it. And hopefully, if I don't persuade you, at least I hope to put in your mind the curiosity about studying direct democracy more. And those of you who live in countries like the United States, where you do have at the state level a measure of direct democracy, please do not think that Swiss direct democracy has a lot to do with American direct democracy. It's very different from California direct democracy 
Oregon, direct democracy, and the other two dozen states that also have important elements of direct democracy. That does not mean that direct democracy in the states is should be discarded, but direct democracy in the states have many problems. If we refer, for example, to California, the financing of referendum campaigns can involve unlimited amounts of money because of a really terrible decision that the Supreme Court of the United States, I believe it was a conservative court, it just shows you how much things have deteriorated in the United States, where even the courts are progressive or conservative. But anyway, that's another issue, a big one. The court, a few decades ago, decided that corporations have the right, the same rights as individuals have in electoral campaigns and, of course, in referendum campaigns in California and anywhere. This means the amount of money poured into campaigns in California, like in the states in general, forces forces everybody on all sides of the issue to accept, accept donations from people with a lot of money. Of course, that means that any issue who doesn't have support of money people on the right or the left or business has little chance of carrying out a referendum because the opposition we will generate is so massive. The advertisements, the talk shows, uh, everything, you know, everything will be massive, will overwhelm any campaign that doesn't have enough money. But that's a different issue. Now I'm going to go back to my central issue, it is to explain why a direct democracy, Swiss style, is better because it makes better decisions than representative democracy and also than a direct democracy California style. Let me say something else about California. California has direct democracy at the state level, but there is some important provisions here. The referendums require a lot more signatures in proportion than the referendums in Switzerland. It means it's harder to get a campaign going. Then, like I just said, a lot more money is involved. And also, and not less important, is that in some cases the legislature must approve the issue going to referendum. But perhaps the worst one is that the Supreme Court judges of the California Supreme Court or the United States Supreme Court can invalidate the results of a referendum if they estimate that they contradict the Constitution of California or the Constitution of the United States. In Switzerland, that concept does not exist. In Switzerland, whatever the people decide goes home. The people made the constitution as they go. No authority, no Supreme Court, nobody can interpret if the results of the referendum are compatible with the constitution. Nobody has that authority. The Swiss Supreme Court can only invalidate the results of a referendum if there is evidence that illegalities were committed in the process of collecting signatures or in the process of counting ballots, ballots or whatever. But the Swiss Supreme Court is expressly forbidden from intervening in political decisions. And of course, no other court in Switzerland can intervene either. This is very important because this, in essence, invalidates the California direct democracy on any issue that the judges consider should be evaluated and perhaps discarded. So let me go back now why direct democracy Swiss style is superior. First, Switzerland has direct democracy on the three levels, local, cantonal, which like I said is like a province or a state, and the national level. And then there is something very important in Switzerland. In Switzerland, the autonomy is pushed down, meaning municipalities have as much autonomy as they can handle. The municipality decides when an issue is not practical for the municipality to handle and delegates the authority to the canton, to the province or state. And the same happens at the canton level. The canton assumes all responsibilities except those that it decides should be assumed 
by the federal government. The rest, the canton decides. Anything. If you want to know more details, you can look at some other of my videos or perhaps go on the internet uh, about these characteristics of Swiss democracy. But I'm going to get now to the process of decision-making based on the referendum. First, the referendum, like I said, makes the will of the people prevail over the will of the politicians whenever the people so decide. This right there makes it a better political decision because it avoids the divergence that we see in practically all representative democracies today, where the politicians go one way and many people, sometimes half of the country even more, do not like, do not approve, disagree with the law, or the policy or the treaty or the change in the constitution. This is very important. It ensures that there is no great disagreement between the people and the executive and the legislature because the people are the final authority. Now, in the mechanism of the referendum also ensures that the decision is superior than in a direct democracy. I point to this especially because I hear some people say, well, but a direct democracy cannot make good decisions on complex issues because the average person does not understand many issues. For example, how come can the average person vote on nuclear energy, on war, on taxation, on environmental issues, on the medical system? There are too many technicalities there. The average person cannot master that. Well, as far as I know, the politicians in parliament are not experts in practically any of the, is any of the issues they vote on. In the United States, most people in the legislature are lawyers. Lawyers, obviously, they are no experts in nuclear energy, in environmental issues, medicine, and in any of the other issues I mentioned. So what happens? These people have to vote on issues they do not master because they do not have the professional background. What do they do? They rely on experts. Of course, what else can they do? So they bring in experts, consultants, that explain to them in terms that lay people can understand because remember, the politicians are essentially lay people except in the odd subject where they are an expert. But even if they have a profession which has some scientific background. For example, let's say a doctor, a medical doctor, has to vote on medical issues. Well, the medical issues often don't have a lot to do with medicine per se. There is a lot more involved. There is economics, there is uh, taxes, there is all kinds of things. Of course, the doctor will understand a bit more the specific medical issue, but he's not really qualified on the whole subject. He or she has to rely on experts. And those experts advise the politicians. But here we find the first problem. The politicians tend to rely on experts who support their point of view. The politicians are so professionalized now, the parties are such uh, conglomerates, that they cannot just go and say, hey, experts, we want to hear your opinions. We don't really care if your opinion is right wing or left wing. We just want to hear the best opinion. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen because the parties, they already have an ideology, and that ideology tells them universal health care is good. It's good, period. Or it tells them, no, it's not good or about nuclear energy. Some believe, oh yeah, it is good. And others, no, it is not good. They're not really open-minded. They call the experts more than anything else just to bring a stronger support for their point of view. Because remember, the politicians in a representative democracy, they have a lot of power. They're always running for election. They bring the experts to support their point of view. They formulate a policy or a law which they feel 
is the one that the country needs. If the party is in the majority, it is going to be the law or the policy that the politicians in the majority decide. The rest, it doesn't really matter much, unless the politicians sense that this may have effects in the results of the next electoral campaign. But often, that is far away. And here it comes where the decision by the people in a direct democracy is superior. First, the people do not run for election. They do not have to consider the uh, issue from the point of view of how it will impact the election, because they do not run for election. Therefore, the people are more likely to focus on the issue itself, on how it affects them or their children. Because of the nature of the direct democracy that forces the people to vote on specific issues, it also dials down the ideology. And that makes for more rational decisions. But there is another point. In a direct democracy, when the people vote on a referendum on nuclear energy, for example, like they did in Switzerland, in Switzerland they vote they vote four times per year on various referendums because they really control the agenda and the future of the country. When the people have to vote on a complex issue like nuclear energy, most people are lay, just like the politicians are. They, don't, they are no experts in nuclear energy, the economy, the environmental impact. They are not experts. So what they do, they do what the politicians do. They listen to the experts. That is what the campaign leading to the referendum is for. And of course, because they are not running for election, the tone of the campaign is much more rational than it is if the politicians were discussing the issue. And the people, because they do not have an axe to grind, they are interested in listening to experts from all sides. They are interested in listening to experts affiliated or sympathetic to the left, others to the right, and also reputable independent experts that they have a reputation of being independent of political ideology. This means that the people receive better information because they listen, they hear more experts with a wider array of opinions. Let me also add that among the public there are many experts which are not necessarily working as professional experts but because they have expertise on the issues because of their regular jobs. If there is nuclear discussion, there are many nuclear engineers who work in nuclear plants, can participate in debates. The same thing with any medical issue or taxation issue. There are many experts in the general public among the voters. And in the referendum system, during the campaign, those people make their voices heard in their community. This also enriches the debate. It gives more inputs, more qualified inputs, far more than in the representative democracy system where the politicians decide after listening to their own experts. By the time the people decide, they have listened to many experts that explain to them in lay terms the issue. And because they have to explain them in lay terms, just like the experts have to explain them to the politicians, they watch debates, they debate in the family, at work, etc. By the time the Swiss people come to vote in a referendum, the decision is far less politicized, is more rational, and this leads to better decisions for the country, or for the town, or for the state, the canton, or the province. And this is why Switzerland is the best governed country in the world, in almost any index, except in some fake indexes, like the one of The Economist. You know, The Economist Intelligence Unit makes a ranking of democracies. And you would think it will put Switzerland number one, even in its own category, maybe with Taiwan and Uruguay. No, they don't do that. Switzerland runs like number 10 or 12 behind representative democracies, which by definition are far less democratic because the people do not govern, do not really have a say in between elections, like Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, the Netherlands, etc. 
the economist disregards the concept of democracy. Democracy means government by the people. It doesn't mean government by the people when the people agree with my pre-thought ideas about what democracy should be, which is what the economist does. Government by the people means the country in which the people have more decision-making power is clearly the most democratic regardless of what we think of their decisions. Because of direct democracy, Switzerland is better government, has a very high standard of living, is the most politically stable country in almost any area, is very dynamic, very innovative, has very low taxes, and manages also to have, with low taxes, the best healthcare system in the world. Yes, people pay premiums, and the premiums are high. The way they solve the social problems of that is the government pays the premiums of the people who could not, cannot afford them. It is obvious that the direct democracy system is better. The decision by referendums of big issues is clearly superior. Going to war, I think probably all countries in the world, they wouldn't go to war unless they're directly attacked. I'm sure the Russians would not go into the Ukraine if they had to decide it themselves, if the people decided. Because the issue in the Ukraine is not as big for the average Russian to send himself or his children or her children or herself to die in the Ukraine. It has many other benefits. Naturally, because a referendum is a popular decision, the Swiss system has also a built-in mechanism. If opinions change with time, people could initiate another referendum. And let me say something else about why the direct democracy system is better Swiss style. If the feeling of the country changes, any person can initiate another referendum which could overturn the results of the previous referendum. Now, the Swiss are not making referendums every other month. People are smart enough and they realize, well, this point of view won in this referendum. We have, back, have to go back to the drawing board, or well, we'll just wait until things naturally perhaps evolve. But they have this mechanism of, again, adjusting what the law says to the feelings of the people, to the feeling of the majority about what is appropriate. For example, in Switzerland, they do not have the controversy they have in the U.S. about abortion because the people decide the issue and because it is a really democratic decision decided by the people, the side who loses the argument has a stronger motivation to accept the decision or to wait until, because of education, or other circumstances, the feelings of the community change and it's time for another referendum. See, it's a democratic decision because the people decide and that forces the people who do not like the decision to accept it because it is a democratic decision. The decisions made by politicians in parliamentary democracies are not democratic decisions. They are decisions by elected people. Even the decisions by elected politicians in Switzerland are not democratic decisions. They are decisions made by democratically elected politicians. But the decision in Switzerland has its legitimacy, its democratic legis legitimacy, because the country has in place the mechanism that enable the people to stop any law, any decision by the politicians. Although in reality, the politicians pass laws and decisions and policies that most people agree with, and therefore they do not challenge them. Another factor of direct democracy, which is a huge advantage for Switzerland, is that the Swiss politicians of the major four or five parties, which represent 70 to 80% of the people, realize that 
to minimize the chances of a referendum challenging their law, their policy, their treaty, the best way to do it is to govern in coalition. So for decades now, the major parties in Switzerland, they govern in coalition. But they still have to govern in tune with the people, otherwise the people can bring about a referendum. And in Switzerland, like I said, one person, one small group, a minority, if they get the number of signatures to take the issue to referendum, the issue will go to referendum. They, don't, they do not need the big machinery of a party or anything like that. Now, there is one thing about Switzerland concerning the financing of elections. So far in Switzerland, they don't have the problems of California. I do not know if it's because of the political culture of Switzerland, but in Switzerland, big money does not play the role that it plays in California or in the States in elections. Elections are expensive, but the, this situation where a politician to get elected has to accept money from big business or big donors on the left or the right, or the proponents of a referendum have to do the same thing, has not arrived. Nevertheless, there is movement in Switzerland to be more transparent on financing of political campaigns, referendum and non-referendum. But so far, it's not a problem. The other reason why Swiss style direct democracy makes better decisions is the principle of subsidiarity. That means that decisions in the Swiss political system by the politicians, they are also made at the closest level to the people. And of course, the referendums, they also deal with decisions closer to the people in the canton or in the village or town. And only the major decisions go to the national referendum. The Swiss system of decision making in direct democracy is clearly superior to representative democracy. I hope this video has made you aware that direct democracy makes decisions of better quality because it tends to be a slower decision-making process, more reasoned, debated during more time by more people with more input from experts. And they arrive at decisions which are reflected in the history that we see now of Switzerland. And we know that the key to Swiss success is direct democracy because before they had direct democracy, the Swiss had only representative democracy. And the country has improved greatly in many areas because of direct democracy. I must also say, Swiss politicians in the 1800s, when the people pressured for direct democracy, Swiss elected politicians, that was a representative democracy at the time, did not want direct democracy. Why? For the same reasons they don't like direct democracy in the United States, in Canada, in France, etc. Because in a representative democracy, the politicians have a lot more power than in a direct democracy. And the lobbies don't like it either, because in a representative democracy, the lobbies have a lot more power too, because if the politicians have more power, the lobbies with their money can influence them. This is why the lobbies do not like direct democracy either. You may be surprised to know that in Switzerland, big business has no much of a say in the outcome of referendums or even of elections. I also want to say that the Swiss system is fully scalable to any size country because you apply the same concepts I mentioned at the beginning. Give as much power, as much autonomy as possible to municipality, the city, the town, the village, the canton, the province, the state, and they do all they can. This means that if the country is bigger, all you have to do is you'll have more municipalities, more states, more cantons. The Swiss system will work in France, in Germany, in Italy, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Canada, in India. India is already a representative democracy, but even will work in China. Of course, the Chinese will have to get rid of the Communist Party, but if they follow with their fellow Taiwanese, the fellow Chinese in Taiwan have done, China also could be 
could be a direct democracy. And of course, that would be the great door for China to become number one. As a dictatorship, China will never become number one because the rest of the world will oppose China. There is no way the rest of the world will allow China to become number one. They will even go to war if necessary. Just like the West, just like the democracies did when the Germans and the Japanese trying to control the world. This is all I wanted to say about direct democracy, especially why direct democracy is a better way to make decisions. I hope that at least I put in your mind the doubt about the advantages of direct democracy decision making. All my videos are closed captioned in 33 languages of the world, among them the most important ones. I put closed captions so that people who have difficulty understanding my English, either because they're English or my English, can understand it better. Again, I'm happy to go anywhere, any place, anytime to speak about direct democracy, to debate direct democracy, to be interviewed about direct democracy. My mission in life now is promotion of direct democracy because I do not have the slightest doubt that direct democracy is the great advancement we need in democracies, in the whole world. But in democracy it will be easier because we know the Swiss did it too. They transitioned from representative democracy to direct democracy. I am convinced that direct democracy is an advance over representative democracy, just like representative democracy is a colossal advance over absolute kings, dictators of one party or one person, uh, theocracies, and all those other systems, which in my view, they are inhuman. Thank you very much.